China boasts one of the world's most sophisticated and varied cuisines. And for the gastronomically adventurous, it's paradise. In this program, a taste of the huge diversity of food on offer from morning through to night. A look at how to order and say what you'd like. And a flavour of home cooking during the mid-autumn moon festival. At this countryside B&B just outside Beijing, breakfast is traditional and filling. Breakfast. Fan. Literally, morning food. Corn porridge and rice porridge are the main dishes here. They're accompanied by pickles, beans, onion pancakes and spicy scrambled eggs. <laughs> In cities, many Chinese eat a fast breakfast on the way to work. Dough sticks, the top favourite. Fried dumplings. Patties filled with meat and vegetables. Xierbing. Sweet bean paste parcels. Zongzi. They all make tasty morning snacks. Lunch. Wu fan. Literally midday food. So important is eating to city dwellers that even canteen food can be excellent. Students at Beijing University are spoilt for choice and quality. Chi to eat. Wasi Huan Chi. I like to eat. Wasi Huan Chi Dofu. I like eating dofu. Wasi Huan Chi Dofu. Mi Fan Hao Ji Ro. Mi Fan Rice. Ji Ro. Chicken. I don't like to eat. In Beijing, one of the most traditional lunchtime places, with much of its original character, is the old Beijing Noodle King. As guests arrive, waiters shout out how many you are and rush to look after you. For ordinary people in Beijing, lunch is generally a hearty meal and chunky northern-style wheat noodles fit the bill. They're quite different from the very fine noodles of southern China. Mian Piao Noodles it's the multitude of sauces, pickles and spicy vegetables that make the noodles appetising. It all adds up to cheap and tasty family food, or even a convivial business lunch. One of Beijing's finest restaurants, the Chen Ju De, offers a wonderfully traditional setting in which to savour the city's most famous dish, Beijing duck. Ducks are force-fed before slaughter, so that they're plump and fat. They're coated in honey, water and vinegar, and roasted in wood-fired ovens. Kao ya, roast duck. To order duck, you can say, Qing lai yi zhi kao ya. Please bring one roast duck. The waitress asks, what would you like to eat? Vegetables. They decide on beans and mushrooms. Please bring. A plate of fried beans. Douzhao. Beans. Mogu. Ipar mogu. A plate of mushrooms. Mogu. Mushrooms. 
Then the pancakes arrive, along with spring onions and sweet soybean sauce to accompany the duck. <laughs> Once it was only the city's elite who could afford this delicacy. Now it's a popular choice for all kinds of people. When you're ready for the bill, say, The bill, please. If you visit China on business, you may well be entertained by your hosts in style. At the Grand Capital Seafood Restaurant, you'll be offered some of the most authentic Cantonese cuisine to be found in Beijing. Seafood is one of the main ingredients of Cantonese food. Canton's capital, Guangzhou, is a port, and many foreign influences have found their way into the cooking. The result? Elaborate mixtures of flavors and textures. The haute cuisine of China. The head chef is Ma De Guang. When he arrived here, he brought his whole restaurant crew up from Guangzhou. He's been passionate about cooking since the age of 15. On a good day, there can be as many as 500 guests to feed at one sitting, but he relishes the challenge. If you're being entertained by Chinese hosts, they're likely to do the ordering and simply ask you for your preferences. Xia Prawns Yu Fish. Do you like to eat fish or prawns? Steamed. Cooked in soy sauce. Next, they decide how to have their rice. They choose plain rice. is fried rice. Restaurants catering for business clients offer more seats in private rooms than in the open area. These formal lunches often turn into banquets, costing thousands of yuan. It's the done thing to offer guests far more than they can possibly eat. Kuaizi, chopsticks, designed, it seems, to make you savour every morsel. Yen Ying is well versed in cultural differences. In China, guanxi, connections, help to oil the wheels in business dealings. And often these connections start over a meal. 出来中国的人可能不太习惯for many Chinese, a fun night out means eating good food in good company. At this Sichuanese restaurant, traditional hot pot provides the best of all worlds, sizzling spices and a friendly atmosphere. Most people order a double hot pot, Yin and Yang, mild and hot. Beware of Yang. 
The main ingredient is meat. Ro. Niu ro. Beef. Ji ro. Chicken. You can also have fish and vegetables. Yu ro. Literally fish meat. Mo gu. Mushrooms. O pian. Lotus root slices. Qing cai. Greens. The process of cooking your own the way you want it is half the fun of hot pot dining. Mm. The chicken is really good. Everyone has their favorite ingredients. Eating out on the streets is what many Chinese enjoy. In Beijing, people flock to Snack Street for the tastiest morsels in China. Grasshoppers, frogs, not everyone's taste may be, but there's plenty to choose from. And it's cheap, around 5 yuan a portion. To order, you can simply say, 我要, I want. 我要一个炒面. I want one portion of fried noodles. 我要一个炒面。炒面五块。我要一个蘑菇,两个西兰花。一个蘑菇, a portion of mushrooms. 两个西兰花。Two portions of broccoli. Out in the countryside, China's Mid Autumn Moon Festival is when families traditionally come together to enjoy the fruits of the earth. Everyone expects a good spread. Come here. Cheers. Mooncakes are the centerpiece. Rich, heavy pastries filled with fruits or meats. There are nuts, dates, and plenty of other locally grown delicacies. <laughs> <laughs> Traditionally, people gather and philosophize under the full moon, and there are poems extolling its magic. One legend has it that the moon is inhabited by a hare endlessly pounding the drums of immortality. At his side is a beautiful woman, transported there with the help of a magic potion. She's achieved eternal life, but at a price, eternal solitude. When the autumn moon is full, she gazes out on the world she's left behind. <laughs> <laughs> 